Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boys from For Those With Good Taste. I'm Matt. He's Lenny. Hey, hey, hey. And we'd like to kick this episode off by first saying thank you to everyone. We really appreciate all the love and support we're getting uh, from that latest release of our top five favorite movies. Loving the uh, the feedback that we're getting on it. How's that make you feel, Len? I mean, it's been a really awesome week. I mean, we were both really proud coming out of the release of that. And like, it was a good spot to it for us to kind of start on iTunes and yeah, I've been blown away, man, uh, by the just the amount of people who watched it and the people who've reached out to us and said good things. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, I was going to come in and talk about how, shit, like about how like roomy this is, how I have room to like stretch out because D's not no, here. No more, no more visitor, no yeah, more guest. Yeah, like I can like move into this part of the room again. I was going to come in and talk shit about that, but uh, no, man. I like special thanks to D. Uh, we couldn't have asked for a better person to start it out with. I'm sure you can agree either. It, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, anytime we get D's perspective on anything, it, it's a it's a good time. Yeah, you put the three of us in a room, uh, and we normally make the most out of it. And like, I, I think people got a pretty good idea coming out of that about what our relationship is like and it's a lot of just like I think people understood that things can get a little out of hand in here yeah i mean like, it's a lot of bashing each other and like it's fun though we had a lot of fun doing it uh, man, our I ability to just go with it i think was the best part about all of it and, and we're really excited to put it out there we love the response that it's gotten yeah. uh, which gives us a great opportunity to start this episode off the right way we always miss out on this opportunity so if you're new to the channel if you're a first time you know listener viewer make sure to like comment share subscribe Get hooked on the channel so that you can check us out each and every time we release content. Because uh, if you love what you've seen so far, I, I think it's safe to say that it's only going to get better from here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we've only scratched the surface of the ideas that we have. And, and there's a lot more top fives to come. I know right now we've done a lot of MMA stuff, which we're, we are branching out. We promise for all the people out there. We appreciate you for hanging in, though. Yeah, no, and like and, and people going back and watching those videos, it's not going unnoticed. So we appreciate that, too. Uh, as the kids say, smash that like button. Kids. Yeah, hit subscribe, 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 and make sure to share with everyone. But yeah. This week, we're going to kick it off because I'm feeling extra good, and I felt like it was going to be a little awkward coming into this episode because three straight Eastern Conference Finals, three straight crash and burns, the Boston Celtics are not in the NBA Finals. Man, it feels good. I'm going to let you have your moment, and you can continue to say whatever you need to say, and I'll, I'll agree or pitch in when I need to. I want to point out really quickly, though, that it is so funny to watch people who can't sniff a, a playoff appearance talk shit to somebody about going three years on a row to the Eastern Conference Finals. If that's where my, like, the downfall of my Boston Celtics are going to be is that I get to go to the playoffs every year and go on, go on these really dope runs, I'll, I'll live with it. I'll live with it. But you can move on with your Here's my rebuttal. At the end of the day... We have the same amount of titles from your Eastern Conference visits in the last three years. Yeah. I don't get paid revenue, so I don't care if my team got to play a couple extra games uh, if it didn't no, mean you, anything you, for us. See, you're fucking lying right now, and you know damn well you're lying because you would love if they said like, "Hey, this year we're going to make a special exception because we want the New York market to get into the playoffs." What, what You'd they, be like, "Please, please let sign us." Lenny, what are they going to do? Let everybody in? Because that's how far you'd have to go have you seen in the order MLB for, the, playoffs? for the next to qualify. Have you seen the MLB playoffs? <laughs> MLB playoffs, 100% okay with them bringing it back. Let's not start handing out golden gloves and batting titles. How about on, that dickhead on, on, on the Astros? What? Did you see that, Correa? Dude, can, can we also talk about how they absolutely needed those trash cans because everybody's batting under 250 oh, now? Oh my God, baseball sucks now anyways. But like this guy coming out and being like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you. How do you guys feel now? Like, what do you, what do you guys feel now? It's like, like we beat somebody. You beat the fucking what twins? Get the fuck out of here, dude. And, and you didn't really look good doing it. They I said mean, the th twins haven't have lost eighteen straight playoff games. Have you seen that? That's crazy. Fucking out uh, astounding. The and, fact that you even made the playoffs to make that a statistic. It's incredible. Yeah, and then you brag. Then the team that cheated to get to where they were brags about beating them. Like, well, that's we can get back to basketball. Make fun of me. Do what you need to do. Listen, we've we've talked a lot about how sports coming back was a huge plus. How we've seen some intense basketball games, some great football games so far, barring all the injuries. I think baseball is probably the only sport that it hurts me to say it, but I was okay with them just kind of shelving that one. I, I'd rather an eighty-game season where we end up with these playoff teams that aren't really all that good. Hence the Astros. Uh, didn't really catch my interest, but the Boston Celtics crashing and burning. I, I had a little bit of a block party of my own, but at the same time, it's the Lakers versus the Heat. 
The Lakers wouldn't have really made the playoffs if uh, LeBron James wasn't tapping into his inner Hillary Clinton and uh, sending out those emails. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, on the Celtics front, I think I, I got out in front of this a little bit. I said in that episode we did talk about the Celtics that I this was the one matchup. The Heat were the ones that I was worried about, and it's not because they're not. I don't. They're better than us. Like I'll just say it because they beat us. But like talent wise, they're not better than us. They're just like they're dogs. Like those guys are scrappy. Um, and our and I just don't I. I think Marcus Smart's a dog. Um, the rest of them, Jalen Brown has its moments, but man, like I think there's some softness in some of these other guys, and they're young, so it's a little bit of a sense of entitlement because for the past three years, there's been a lot of talk of Boston being the the, the best team with the most potential coming out of the East, and they just haven't. They've made it very deep into the playoffs, but they haven't quite crossed that threshold, and I think that plays a little bit of a part in it. I think for for us, we we saw the the loss of a guy like Aaron Baines or uh, Marcus Morris, these guys that had some edge the to grit. them, right? Yeah, that weren't going to like – if we were going to get punked like we were in some of those games, they would have made some I mean, Mar- moment. Marcus right? Mor- Morris is bouncing basketballs off of people's faces. Yeah. Like, that guy doesn't take no shit. Exactly. You know, like, like well, he, and he's just an irritator too, but, I like, I just – I think that there was nobody there that really had the grit. I mean, Gordon Hayward missed a fucking point Blake uh, – like lay up yeah. in, in in game six. Like, what are we doing, man? Like, like there, there's just so many moments that we should have won that series realistically. Like the first two games of the series that we lost, we should have won, but we, we screwed it up. Uh, it, it was frustrating, man. I haven't, I'm not watching the finals. I'm going to be completely honest with everybody out there. Sure. I'm that sports fan. Like once my team loses, I'm not listening to sports radio. I'm not watching the games. Uh, I'll see you back in January or whatever, whenever the fuck they say the basketball season's back. I'm on to the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good train to be on right now. Yeah, I mean, well, kind of. We're playing the Chiefs this week. So uh, for third time, third time, um, I don't know if the Belichick era that they're seven uh, seven point or more underdogs. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. That's a side note. We can get back to basketball. Uh, it's clear as day. We're, we just got done with game one. The fucking Lakers are going to win. To your point, LeBron crying fucking wolf about not getting foul calls when I've seen the worst refing ever in this playoffs is insane. Yeah, I think they said that the email came from the Lakers, but I'm pretty sure we know that LeBron was yeah. was on the keyboard talking, I'm not getting the calls. Like you don't even need to do that. Your team is so clearly like your two players in this finals. Uh this finals it's, it's like a bummer because I, I don't part of the reason I, I'm I'm upset and I don't want to watch it, but the other part of me is like it's a foregone conclusion. We're like we're lucky if we get a gentleman sweep out of this one, especially after Dragic and uh, and Bam go down in game yeah. one. Yeah, uh, and the, and the Lakers take game one very it wasn't very easy. easily. Like I mean, very easily. I saw three minutes of that game and I was like, well, this is bad. I, I tuned in and looked at the score and I think the announcer was saying something along the lines of LeBron's doing what LeBron does, and I was like, yeah, this is this is my out. I'm gonna hit that button and. It's it's difficult to think that, you know, the Lakers versus the Heat should be a bigger series. Jimmy Butler versus LeBron should be a bigger series. The the, the issue isn't LeBron, though. I think at this point what you're finding, and I, I just, in the East, outside of having Joel Embiid, like, who do you, who's out there that's like a dominant big, big man yeah. that can keep up with Anthony Davis? Because, like, Bam makes us look like absolute dog shit, but then he can't even compete. Can't even sniff. Right? So this is the Celtics problem. The Celtics, like, like maybe we'll down the line get into this, but, like, they, they are looking at trade options like Miles Turner and some of these other guys from the Pacers um, that, that interest me, but none of them are – I guess you have to try and win small ball, which they were doing. Like, we're running lineups where – our big is is Grant Williams, who's like six foot eight. You know, well, we're running the rocket style. Well, offense. you talked about it a lot on on the last episode where we really jumped into the Celtics, where you know you guys have the matchup issue, where if you matched up against the the Heat, it was going to be a little bit of a problem for you. Mm-hmm. Where in, in any other instance, you match up against the Raptors, significantly better, right? Another team that plays small. We were we were built to beat LeBron when he was like a cap. Right. right. So we, our team is built with the idea of beating wings. Like we, we have, we're three deep at wing when we have a healthy or four deep, depending how you see Marcus Smart. He's more a team point. that can really move the ball. But you know, like like Gordon Hayward, great ball facilitator. He just doesn't have what he had in in Utah, and whether that's the leg or the numerous injuries that have come from the leg, I, I can't fault him. But it sucks that we're going to be investing thirty something million dollars into him next year. I can't for, fault him for, for opting in either. Like. Yeah. Uh, and we need him. It, like 
that 31 million is going to be way too much regardless. But if he comes back next year and he's the sixth man that we need him to be, like the best sixth man coming off the bench in the league, Lou Will style, like gets you 20 off the bench and can He can bring that X factor he, he when can, you're trying to rest your stars. That Yeah, give you that buzz off the, like where he, he just – I don't know. He can't get to the hole anymore. I don't know if that's losing explosiveness. Doesn't his shot have the is, grit and the aggressiveness. Yeah, his shot's nice from mid range, but his three ball has not looked good through the playoffs. So, right. you know, he we could stay on Gordon Hayward all day. I hope they. I hate saying this, but I hope they find a way to move him. Uh, this finals isn't real though. Fuck LeBron. He's not winning. No, we He's, we, this we know what's going to happen. We're going to forget in three fucking days after it's over. So I, I would say blessed we all are that basketball makes a quick turnaround very very quickly. But if we move over to football, yeah. Patriots are doing well. They're going to come up against a Kansas City Chiefs team that made Baltimore look like they were in a completely different league. Yeah, ball, the problem with Baltimore, though, is I, I can't – not that I can't take that seriously because Baltimore is going to beat almost every other team, but they can't play from behind. They're not built to play from behind. They're, they're because, a, running, they're a yeah, running football team. They're a ball control, uh, you know, heavy. Like, like Lamar Jackson just has not proven – that he can win a game where he, had, he I think he won one playoff game where he had to pass, right? Uh, sure. The, the one caveat there is I I watched that game mm-hmm. and I saw probably about eight drop balls between Hollywood Brown, mm-hmm. Mark Andrews, and Willie Sneed. Yeah. And Mark Andrews was the big one because two of them were in the end zone when the game was relatively close. You were probably down by 10 or 17 at that point. And then again, to your point, he's not able to overcome some of that adversity and continue to, to to push through. And that that's it's tough when you have a drop like that, but he's also said it that the Kansas City Chiefs are his kryptonite. They're 0-3 against them already. You just look at uh, you look at the names you named, though. It's like those guys have been so successful because they're on a team that people have to play probably eight in the box. So you're you're getting pretty much man-on-man coverage on on those skill players on the outside. So a guy like Mark Andrews in the past two years is has jumped right, right off the street. He, he's got this great connection with Lamar Jackson, but I think a lot of it is like tight ends benefit. I think a lot from play action and all these, all these other things. And it's probably the easiest thing for a young quarterback to get is a comfortable relationship over the middle of the field with their tight end. So I think that's where Mark Andrews has grown so much. Hollywood Brown, really skilled guy, but is he a number one on a team? Like, I, I don't, I don't think if he, I think he's a skilled he, player. He's but, a deep threat and he yeah. does very well on the fades on the outside. For a, a quick slant passer like Lamar Jackson, somebody who needs to win that battle over the middle, he's just, he doesn't really seem to be that guy. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where it gets a little bit dicey. But how do you see the Patriots matching up against the Chiefs right now? I mean, I, I think smart money would be on us losing, unfortunately. But I, if we can come out, if we win the toss, like this is going to be one of these times where Belichick's got to take the ball first, right? He, he, this is going to take a, a big brain game from 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 bill belichick i think I, I think the brain here is get up early you need to get up seven nothing like you need to score seven nothing first drive you get the ball and then you got to stay ahead the whole game because if you let the chiefs get ahead first and they're up seven nothing the same way i'm talking about the way that the ravens are constructed i think the patriots this year are in a similar state where you know edelman is having his his best in terms of deep passing numbers he's ever had he's the most air yards i heard this the other day that like um two years ago his air yards so the ball the ball traveling in the air to get to him was like nine yards with brady nine yards from yards. he was a yards after catch guy um the year after that it jumped up to like maybe 12 yards this year i think it's up to like 17 or 18 yards in between like in the air on the passes so obviously him and cam have a different relationship than him and brady it might get him killed. Side note, um, he's he's put Julian Edelman's life on the line like three times over it, the middle. It, it gets a scary. little bit scary. It's a little scary, yeah. So, um, we, I, what I'm saying though is, I just don't think that we're we're a ball control team. I think we want to run the ball right, so we want to get up early, and I think we want to minimize the chances that Patrick Mahomes has to get the ball. Now, I would say we're going to lose this game, but I think this game is really important towards the playoffs because this is kind of your training ground to see what works and what doesn't work, right? As long as everybody stays healthy to get to that point. I could see this game going eerily similar to the the Seahawks game. I don't want to be in that game. I don't want to be in that game, but if you look at what Cam was able to do with Edelman, with uh, Nikhil Harry, I think Nikhil Harry like, had like 10 catches that game for like 120 yards. Um, we, we haven't really seen the best out of him yet. And it seems like he and Cam have a great relationship so far. Biggest benefactor of this season is probably going to be Nikhil Harry, which is great for us as like Patriots fans. Um, 
I, I said I don't want it to be like that. If you tell me that, like, at the end of the game, that us and the Chiefs, like, we're going to be on the one-yard line with a chance to win the game, I want that. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I just don't think that a shootout this year, any matchup that you tell me that we're going to be in a shootout, I don't think it's going to benefit us. Yeah. Um, although, like, Cam has shown that he can... But, know, but then we're stuff. relying on Cam's arm rather than relying on a game plan, which has really been... The, the Patriots' consistency for the yeah. last, what, two decades? Yeah, like I said, I, the game plan's got to be get the ball, score, yeah. stay ahead. We, score. Bring, we bring James White back, too. Yeah, uh, I mean, after that, that, a terrible tragedy. Yeah, we'll see how, and uh, RIP to his, his um, was it both parents or it was just. I think his mom's still in the hospital. Yeah. And okay. he lost so, his father. Rest in peace. Uh, that's, that's tough. And I, I guess the, the difficult thing is there, you don't really know what kind of relationship or how he's going to fit into that Cam offense either, because, I mean, Cam is a runner himself. They, a power running scheme, and then, you know, deep threat down the field. That doesn't necessarily lend to what uh, James White does for the yeah, Patriots, Yeah, if you, if you look right? at the success that Rex Burkett has had, it's, it's been a lot on that option and play action mm -hmm. where James White isn't that come out of the back back. Yeah. He's more of a receiver. He's going to see way more targets and receptions than he does carries. It, it'd be interesting to see how he plays into that offense. He, he's a receiver. Uh and he's more of a short yardage receiver. Tom, he's a right. Tom Brady type receiver. Whereas I think Burkhead, part of the thing he's done really well with Cam Newton is he can stretch the field a little bit for he's been you able to too. Go deep. He's great. I mean, he's been great whenever the Patriots have had Rex Burkhead healthy. The health is always the issue. I'm more excited at this point um, to see uh, Damian Harris come back. Oh yeah, from IR. Like oh, that, yeah. That's for both fantasy needs for me and just in personal needs. I want to see how good he is. I mean, Sony Michelle, you could get a sense last week that he kind of knew that his time's up and he was playing for his job a little bit. Which was unfortunate because he had some little bursts early in the game. And then you just start seeing him fade out and they just, just they just to, turn it right over to Rex. Add him to the list though. Like he's a fucking Lawrence Maroney. Like, go, like no, no, Lawrence is different. They gave Lawrence Maroney a lot of time to, well, to I mean, be the feature back. I mean, Sonny Michelle's didn't. on year three, no? Um, sure. So he, he was just hurt a decent amount last year. But what I mean is, like, like we draft these guys, and even the, the law firm, you know, Ben Jarvis, uh, Green Ellis, right? Yeah. He Like, these guys that, like, they have this magnet to the goal line. and but, but, but I mean, well, the line of scrimmage, not the goal line, but they have this magnet to the line of scrimmage where they just hit it and they fall down. Right. Like, they, they're two magnets, like, and they just bounce off of each yeah. other and we go backwards. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis, like, our biggest, like, positive that we gave that guy never lost a yard no. we didn't say like you gained a bunch of yards <laughs> we were just like, that guy never lost a yard never for lost us. a yard yeah never lost I think, a yard he never had a fumble yeah for, like, like four dude, seasons well when you only get to the one one yard runs every single time you touch the ball buddy you're not gonna have like you don't have the velocity to lose the ball sir yeah. what are yeah, you yeah, talking dude, about like, inertia doesn't work like that buddy yeah, equal and positive energy must coexist. Uh, and, and yeah, the running back's just not like our, our strength. That's why I'm like, okay, Damian Harris, like maybe you can be the guy to show some pop because that's the issue is like, who was the last guy that we had like pop in the running the bruiser? Yeah, well, it's like, I don't know. We, had the, we had the bruiser, Le but like Blount? Corey Dillon was the last time I remember like a great blend oh, of like that's... speed and, and everything for the Patriots, right? Like, like Corey Dillon, we had dude, Corey Dillon, Kevin Falk. Yeah. Oh, man. What a, what a combination. Yeah. yeah. We can't get back to those days, man. I, I genuinely would hope that if it is a shootout, Kansas City's defense has been known to be a little bit susceptible to deep balls. Cam, if he's willing to take that risk with Harry and, and even Edelman, if he's got to sacrifice Edelman, I don't know. If, I, if we get a dub, maybe we sacrifice Edelman over the top. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I might be okay with it. I didn't know if you meant like sacrifice as if like we had to do some type of like satanic thing to get this dub. No, I'm sure he feels like he's going to have to do something satanic just to survive yeah. in that in that yeah. outfield. Cam's got a voodoo doll in his fucking back pocket. But Cam looks good, man. Yeah, uh, him, from man. from a health perspective, he looks good. He looks good on the run. Uh, he's been taking chances. That, that hit that he took at the end of the Seahawks game where he just front flips over the defensive line. Got me nervous, but you see him, he's he's game. He's ready to come back in. He's, he's always been a physical guy. I mean, he if we were if we had a one against the Seahawks, I think we would be in more of a like MVP conversation for him. The the tough thing for him is in the same division as him is the actual front runner. Josh Allen, him. Yeah, jo Jeez. Josh Allen is like a, a monster this year. Yeah, I can't give I can't say too much of this on air because too many people that I associate with are Bills fans. Yeah. Uh Bills are undefeated. Is, are they I Bills fans? Because that's the team that you should support. No, no, okay. no stop sorry, doing sorry, this, dude. Sorry, dude. God, my, 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 my. ruining a good thing. <laughs> Bills are three and zero. Josh Allen's Superman right now. That Stefan Diggs trade is looking looking golden great, right, right now. Yeah. Um, uh, not not so good for the Vikings. 
And their defense looks scary too. Yeah. They, they gave up a lot of points this weekend, but they look really scary. I'm uh, excited to play in them. I, I I think that we beat them, but I, yeah. I'm excited because they're the Bills. Yeah. Like, let's, Bills Mafia, you're fucking great. But, know you, know your place. Yeah, dude, keep jumping right? through fucking tables, buddy. Like stick to that. You're three and zero. We're two and one. One game changes it all. Stick right? to what you know. Making pizza in filing cabinets in your Put, parking putting lot. babies through tables. Have you seen that? Right? Where they make the pizzas in the filing cabinet? Have you seen that thing? Dude. Guy has a grill in the. Pl- oh, in the, I've, oh I've, 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 I've heard. Like the pizza looks pretty good. It looks good. Yeah. Don't want to touch it. No. no. Is it because it's from a Bills fan? I don't know where that file cabinet's been. I think just in that parking When's lot. When's the last time that guy had a job? I don't know these <laughs> I think things. That is his job. He stays there year round at the Bills parking Listen, lot. Listen, man. Tons of positives to take out. Yeah. If we if if it comes down to the Bills and the Patriots taking it for the NF the NL the <laughs> Jesus Christ the AFC East, mm-hmm. it'll be a good time. We've needed some competition. It, it's always been the oh you guys are in a weak division. The only reason you guys win anything is because you're in a weak division. Speaking of division, like Sam Donald, props on that fucking run last night, buddy. You, you're on the Jets. You suck. But like. <laughs> there was a there was a meme where it's the guy cleaning off his glasses and it's Lamar Jackson and then he's cleaning off his glasses and it's Sam Darnold. Dude, that run is electric. <laughs> he broke at least three and a half. Dude, ankles. The one in the backfield, he was dead to rights. That guy was at a at him like thirty five miles an hour. You know that that guy was like, "I'm here to kill you," and he was just like, "Nope, oh, not man. happening." You know what I thought instantly was how embarrassed have you? Like, because I think we've all been there. Like, especially me as like a guy who like was never like a big athlete, and especially from a speed perspective, right? If I'm playing tag or something, and I'm like. I'm coming for you, right? I'm not stopping once my momentum gets going. And then once that <laughs> skate, that small dude and like in tag and when you're growing up, put the juke, put on, the you, juke on you. Oh, I'm done. I was toast every my fucking time. My ankles are gone, <laughs> yeah. sir. Yeah, I felt so bad for that guy because that's on live TV. You just, I would fake an injury. If that was I, me, I'm my ankle sprained. I'm falling over. Bring me the golf cart. Yeah. Bring me the golf cart. Hey, hey coach, ACL. are we playing on Thursday? I'm, I'm going to be out for at least a week yeah, and a I half. Yeah, I need to recover from my fucking morale here, dude. Oh. Uh, but yeah, electric. Like a 45-yard run. He looked like fast as lightning. I don't know. He looked like... when What is... um What does Rocky's trainer say to him? Fast as grease lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you start bringing up Rocky references in yeah. there. You're just trying to grab the fucking chickens in the backyard. <laughs> Grease them. Uh, <laughs> incredible. I think that the AFC East is really entertaining uh, with Cam, with Josh Allen. Props to Sam Darnold. Hopefully he can survive with, with the Jets. I, I just don't think uh, it's going to be a good season yeah, for that. Get him out. We'll get Adam Gase out of there. Don't get him out of there. Uh, but. But, but bring on the Chiefs, baby. Yeah. Let's do this. So but I'm I'm going to say we're going to lose, but we'll cover the spread. We're losing, but we're covering the spread. We're going to go gamblers. We're going to win by three. Okay. That's, I'm throwing right. that out there. You're, you're, if we win, if you've got money on it, send your money right here, baby. Yeah. Win by three. Just pay us. So moving on, buddy. Uh, we let me ask. We have a movie. We have a TV show premiere coming this week. We do. Um, I want to get your take on it. Okay. Are you still? Would you still consider yourself a Walking Dead fan? Oh, you bastard! Yeah. Um The Walking Dead and I have a really weird relationship because it seems as a lot of people do. There was a point where I would get together with eight, nine friends every Sunday and we would watch The Walking Dead. It brings up an interesting conversation that was that like Game of Thrones a little bit. I mean, I say is that Game of Thrones like that was the first show that people like loved because The Sopranos, all I, these other shows. I, but like The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones in my head were like events, right? Like They, people- they were culture Cold, iconic. I think we went might to be your the friend's word. house to watch those. Yeah. Like we, and at my job, we used to have like uh, like watch parties on Sunday yeah. nights. People would stay for like Game of Thrones, and I kind of remember it being similar with Walking Dead at a time like five years ago, probably. Right? Yeah, and I can I <clears> can pinpoint <throat> a certain bat to the forehead. Hmm. Spoiler alert: three, two, one. Yeah. Glenn gets smashed in the face by Negan, and it was an awesome scene. But something about that scene for me was like, wow, this is what we're doing now? Like, we're just... It was... I mean, all all mountains have a peak, right? And that and that might have been it. For, for a lot of people, I think, um, and for a time I would have agreed it was a peak. You know, me and you have talked at times about, like, where I'm at with it now. Um, I, I've i fallen back in love with the show. Really? Personally. Like, I, I, I'm with you that, like, once the once that scene, that episode happened... Um, I was at an all-time interest, right? Um, I think a lot of people did. That's probably one of the most watched things that they've done, right? And it's so funny to say that it went down, but that probably just is a testament to the character that Glenn was, right, at the time. Like, so beloved and such a pivotal part of that team. Um, 
that I think people needed time, and I I did need time, and I also I think the pacing of that show has always been really hit or miss. And, and I think that that's what was the hardest to accept was I came from a show where every episode I'm kind of on the edge of my seat waiting for something to happen, and some things would happen, but in most cases the bulk of those episodes is me waiting for something to happen. Yeah. And as we gradually progressed and we got to see that pacing kind of shift and change, that was a, a season opener where the dynamic was completely changed and we were escalating, as Will Farrell would say, they were escalating quickly. Yeah. It, it got cool. real interesting. Yeah. Well, so I think that they're a big, like, um, everything builds to a crescendo with them. Um, but like, they don't know always, or they, it's not always predictable where the crescendo is going to happen, right? Where that like build is going to, is going to come to its like peak. Um, I, I look at the earlier seasons where it's like season one is only six episodes, but they're really, really good, right? The se- second season is probably my least favorite of the show in a way. There's things I like about it, but it takes so long to, build to up. get to anything yeah. um, that like the end of the season is fantastic. And you're so happy when you like work through those episodes. But man, for a long time, it's just a lot of talking and, and um, Char- subtle, character development. Yeah, subtle issues, which I think is important. And it probably doesn't get enough credit for how important that is. Because for you to care about Glenn so much, exactly. you have to watch six seasons of Glenn. And he, don't act like they didn't tease his death a million times. Like, he he was off. Like, they they uh, that season earlier, probably, they had said that he was Well, like, that's what I was going to say. I was right? going to say his character motive for the entire series has been, oh, shit, Glenn might be dead. Yeah. What's Maggie going to do if Glenn's dead? What, what's going to happen? And he's always been able to come back. And, and that's where they did a fantastic job of having us invest in a character so much that we're willing to sift through any dryness or any slow buildup to, to get to the end of it. You know, I, I, we're going to jump around a ton here, but like you, you kind of mentioned, you know, what's what's Maggie going to do and what's this and that? Uh, the thing that ends up hurting, I think, a lot of shows that run for 10, 11, 12 seasons Um it, not that this show is hurt at all by it, but like Always Sunny, for instance. Um, Classic. You know, when when the AP Bio show comes out, right? Glenn uh, ends up, Dennis ends up leaving for a season, essentially. Yeah. I, I think when fans of a show see the main characters that they love start to go off and do other things, maybe it makes the show feel less important. And what I mean is you look at The Walking Dead, um, you know, they kill Glenn and you go another... I believe it's a season and a half, maybe it's two seasons, but then you hear about the Rick stuff and then Rick jumps ship, right? Um, for now, now we know it's to do movies. Like he wants to do Walking Dead movies and it's just the grind of the show and he's not even from this country, right? right. So I, I understand some of it, but then Maggie um, steps away because right. she wants to go thing. and do her own thing. And I think it was more a money play on her part where she saw Rick leave and she was like, well, I can step into the role as like the lead. I should get paid to do that. And they didn't want to pay her. So she tried to roll the dice and go do something else. She's coming back too, right? Um, How'd that power move work for you? That's interesting. And that's always interesting. interesting. I won't fault somebody. No, no, no. Not not to fault, but Uh, you hope to come away with something. But what I mean is like, is there a correlation between the downfall of fandom when you see the main characters start to maybe lose love for those same roles? I think you may have just uncovered gold. Yeah. Just now. It's interesting, right? Like, uh, because I think that's that's where the show suffers in some ways is because in the past season and a half, and I think Fear the Walking Dead had this problem too, yeah. is the reason that Glenn's thing is so important is because you care about him, right? But once those people that are gone that you care so much about and they're trying to get you to invest in these other people, but you're seven seasons into a story, we want to see that story progress. But now you have to take me back to square one to get me to care, right? Uh, yeah. And I think that makes it difficult because I, I always had trouble with Fear the Walking Dead. And maybe this is where we're getting into the new show. Uh, Beyond the Walking Dead is what we were going to kind of talk yeah. about here is the new ones coming out. Right. Uh, is it going to be a struggle? Because I'm I, again, I'm back into the series, but I didn't even realize till a day ago. I knew Beyond Walking Dead was coming and I knew October was when they were going to finally air the finale to the uh, most the recent Walking Dead, Walking Dead season, yep. which I'm stoked on. And I, I'd love to keep talking about the Walking Dead here to get to that because like. Anybody who's not watching this show since the Whisperers uh, right. have shown up, you're I like I'm you sorry, need to. it's it's you need really to. good. It's okay. been really good. Uh, but the the fear I have with uh, the fear of Walking Dead uh, the, with Beyond is, am I going to care about these characters? Because I've struggled with the show that I do love, the initial show, to fall in love. Me personally, I fall. I think I'm saying those new series are so good because I I have 
found these characters right. that I like. Like, um, you are invested. Well, in like them. you know, the, the time jump helps a lot with The Walking Dead. I think is working through that time jump because you see the evolution of characters like a Negan. Um, mm-hmm. I love Rick's daughter. Like, I think she's a like great character as far as she's kind of a little badass. Judith, and gonna, yeah, Judith. Like, mm-hmm. I'm. I really, really like her energy. I, I love seeing Daryl have to evolve more and like these characters there are characters that you know from those early seasons that are still there and that's why uh they announced daryl and carol are getting their own like little mini series really yeah so all of this and uh, is in a build up to these three movies that they want to do so the plan here is like you know you you introduce beyond the walking dead because you need to introduce these other characters that don't really fit into the world that is that the walking know. dead con- uh, thing so you need to find a way to introduce them here to then merge all those worlds and like basically the Daryl and Carol thing is probably going to be a tie in once the Walking Dead's done next series see our season uh, to kind of get you to the final step of the movie because like, you know, they haven't I don't think this is a spoiler. If it is, I apologize. Like Rick's out there somewhere. Three, you know, two, one, spoiler. Like, boom. Sure. Like, like I, the, again, Rick's out there somewhere. Uh, fuck. Uh, so we can do a whole episode on spoilers because if shit comes out three years ago, like. Uh, oh yeah, I, fuck you. It's, it's movies, not a spoiler. There's movies I won't spoil, but like if, if but we all know that the dude's not on the show anymore. So I don't think that I have can, to can like I say protect that, the, that. A spoiler only qualifies as a spoiler if it's still in the movies. Yeah. I so I I don't know if I agree with that because if something's well, here's the thing, like six sense, right? One, three, two, one, spoiler. If you knew somebody who had never seen the sixth sense before, okay, would you feel good when you're selling them on the idea of watching that movie to tell them the cliffhanger ending about bruce willis would you feel good about like, no you wouldn't do that no, right? so, yeah, that so would... i don't think that logic may like, okay. works necessarily okay. like but i just don't think like i'm not telling you anything that if you didn't watch the walking dead you wouldn't know right. right you know rick's not on the show anymore yeah. so the the he but they made it very ambiguous so as to whether or not he's, he's alive, alive or, or okay. you, you know on our side that he's alive but they don't know that right so this whole time you're like damn like i really want to like when are they going to start to figure out that he's Still, still out, out there, there somewhere, yeah. and that like he he's got a family and like all these other things, you know. Man, that's that's very interesting. And as someone who stopped watching the show, that's where it's like, yeah, I would want to jump in. Let me ask you a question: What's your biggest concern going if you if you hedge or invest all your money into Beyond the Walking Dead? What do you think is going to be your biggest concern? I mean, in a way, it's what I just said, right? Like, I just, I me mean, not giving a shit about the characters. It could be bad, too. Like, the Fear of the Walking Dead, the, I'm only, I've watched about maybe a season and a half. I'm most of the way through season two. And there's characters I like, but then they just, they don't get a lot of shine the way you want them to, right? Or, you know, it, it's just. There's almost an overemphasis on some of the main characters that you where those that, characters who are going to survive through. There were some really shitty characters on that show. And I oh, think that yeah. that was part of the issue is not have. And I I think that the overall, are we a little zombied out maybe is another fear in there. Do we need a third show? It, it, all of it is just like, it's a volume thing at this point. It's not like you're giving me characters that I know from the show that I really love doing something else. You're just introducing me to a whole different thing. And the premise of the show, for those that don't know, is um, it's the first wave of kids that have grown up only knowing the apocalypse. The apocalypse, right? So this is happening in a point in the world where these kids were born into it, similar to how Judith is and how they... Po- post-apocalypse. Yes. This is all happening where, like, if you were born in the year 2000, they're like, oh, this is the first kid since the year 2000 to do yeah. this. And Who was that like, kid, huh? What's he doing now? We got to find that out. No idea. It's 20. Imagine you were January 1st, 20. Well, like, I remember 2000? that being, like, you say that. Like, I do remember the... That being an announcement, like this was the first baby born in the morning. Oh, I'm sure. But just I imagine like being like, that person. I feel like he was in like the Middle East or something. I don't I don't know. Maybe he was in America. Maybe this eek. I was gonna say, maybe you know, they bring him on for an interview, see how he's doing, eek. but yeah. Eek. Middle East, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. Uh neither here nor there. you've done just enough to maybe spark me into getting back into the Walking Dead. I so do you think you would just it, it's a lot of a lot to, to ask to go watch three seasons of The Walking Dead. Like I, the same way I'm saying the season's awesome. There are still those same faults that The Walking Dead has at right. times, where there are episodes that you have to watch to get to the next episode. Right? Like you need to with any show. Um, there's a huge in the last season. There's a huge thing that happens. Right? And you know what's going to happen. Like you, you the end. They end an episode with this thing that you're like, oh shit! Like something's about to go down. Right? Well, the last time they did that. 
Glenn got bashed in the well, face. So, but my point is, in between that, they do another episode okay. that's about something completely different somewhere over here because they want you to suffer for a Bastards. whole episode, and, and it kind of works in the binging world less now because, like, when you did that week to week TV, it was just kind of expected that I was going to yeah. suffer in between yeah. things. Like, I'd, I'd have to week. deal with this for six to seven days. But when you're binging something and you just want to know, like, that instant gratification, you're like, "Oh fuck!" Like this ending, this episode's ending, and I can get to the next one, and I'm going to know what happened. And they're just like, "No." No, buddy. <laughs> Hold a little bit longer. Like, it's like edging, dude. Like, you're just out here fucking edging. And, and it hurts. It, and you can't go. Yeah, yeah. It's that 16-year-old girl you're on the couch with. It's dry humping without the payoff? Yeah, it's humping hump, your couch when you're 16. Well, I said dry humping without the payoff. Sorry. I don't know where you were taking it. Got that it. confused. <laughs> Very interesting. But but staying on the, the streaming world, right, would you qualify or categorize yourself as someone who prefers to wait week to week or are you that like i need to have it right now i'm gonna binge i'm gonna watch every episode uh i am more on the side of i want to know what happens so the walking dead look like, stay on that right uh i have that set to dvr so but i i'll dvr nine weeks of that show before i actually sit down and, and watch it, it. yeah because mm. I, I i don't because i especially for what we're talking about well, no, you, I'm agreeing with you. I'm the binge guy. Like, the, the, this is why is like, I don't want to get lo- left on that. I want to be able to watch a six episode arc. Yeah. And then it still sucks. So I try not to go too early, right? It, there you go. If I had uh, a nickel for every time I heard that. Yeah. So you try not to, you try not to bust past it too early. And you, you just, you get to that point and you're like, fuck, I want to know what happens next. So I try to wait till week 10, 11, 12, and then I'll yeah, hop in yeah, you don't, and watch it. You don't want to get to the end too quickly. Yeah. Because then you'll ruin the ending. Yeah. yeah. Right? You, you which, always end up disappointed. Which I think is a lesson in life mm. for just about anybody who's looking for one. Yeah. But that 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 brought me to an interesting segment because when we think about movies that are being released right now, and we think about like think about how many movies Netflix has released, those those big like action thrillers. How many of those would you say you've watched? Slim to none. Right? Yeah. No, is that um, weird? I, I don't I don't know why it is because I I like the performers. I love the actors. Like you, you if you tell me Ryan Reynolds is in an action thriller, sign me up. Haven't seen Six Underground. Never, never would. I and it, I think that might be a Michael Bay thing. Uh, truthfully, Could although be. like I, it's funny I say that though because Bad Boys Three, right? Did so, he come back for that? I think he did. You, you he say that been. Michael Bay is somebody who, no, even though I know what's coming, I'm still willing to tune in. Yeah. Uh, I did, I was thinking more about like extraction and how everybody's told me it's great and uh, I just don't care. I I, I so I, many movies don't. I, in I, I'm all over the place in this because I love B movies. I was literally just talking about today. Uh, there's a movie called The Second. Uh, here's your fucking bullshit movie recommendation of the week, everybody out there. There's a movie called The Second. It's got Ryan Phillippe in it and Casper Van Diem. Ooh. Um. Yeah, that struck yeah. my interest. It piqued my fucking yeah. interest. Those are B B actor fucking celebrities, dude. Sign me up. Um, and it's like a bullshit action movie, and so I love that. I, I love that. But Netflix feels like it doesn't know what it is. Like Netflix should be where all my favorite actors from the '90s go to make their um their fucking like new versions of whatever it is. Like Bruce Willis should just only release movies on Netflix. You're saying Nicolas Cage Chris, should only be releasing movies yes, on Netflix? Dude, but like Chris Hemsworth, you should be like you if Extraction came out in the movie theater, I'd be pumped to see it. But it's a fucking Netflix movie, dude. Like, like you're you, giving, that's you're, TV series and bullshit movies to me. Netflix is too easy to turn down. Mm, that's too. Like if you headline I just go to something, the next thing. if you headline something and you're like, hey, this is our spotlight of the week. And your picture just doesn't look good enough for me. Guess what? I'm scrolling over it. And then not only do you not categorize things or show it correctly. If I watch a movie once, maybe I fell asleep when the first 10 minutes and I finished it. Lenny, do you know where that movie goes? Fucking delete that. I couldn't fucking tell you. That movie (laughs) goes into another dimension because I tried to watch Bird Box with my wife. Never seen it. (laughs) I've never seen a Netflix movie. Brother, we got 15 minutes into the Sandra Bullock movie. We both knocked out. She comes up to me like a week later like, hey, can we watch that movie that we missed? Lenny couldn't find it if I didn't search for it. And if I have to search for a movie, I'm not working that hard. Yeah. It will, and in the moment you said Sandra Bullock, it made me realize it's not that I don't like Netflix movies. I just think Netflix should be reserved to like chick flicks and comedies. Uh, cause yeah, you, Sandra okay. Bullock, like, hey, Sandra, 
just come out with two weeks notice uh, the fourth week on on digital, dude. Like, how about you do that? And did we don't. You, did you just make that up? Yeah. <laughs> two weeks notice the fourth week. Yeah. Uh, so, like, come out with that, right? Instead of action movie bullshit, like, just stay to stay in your lane, Netflix, because I love, like... <laughs> can, we, can we trademark that so that doesn't get stolen from us? Well, I'll, I'll sell it to Sandra. <laughs> Fantastic. So... <laughs> Just, I look at it and I'm like, dude, like, I love, um, what was the movie that the dude from, War- Adam from Workaholics did with, like, Ale- Alexandra Daddario? It's like a Groundhog's Day movie. Okay. And it's just a, it's just a comedy that, like, he keeps reliving the same day. That was funny. Um, go check out The Kissing Booth, guys. That's not that bad. The, the, those are all Netflix movies. <laughs> That's what Netflix should be. Don't a place me, for me to feel ashamed about the movies I watch. action thrillers. Because Jamie Foxx, love, love them. In everything that he does. The man can't do wrong. If he does stand-up comedy, fantastic. Mm-hmm. If he plays Ray Charles, fantastic. Yeah. Talks, to put out a club banger. T- talks fantastic. of him possibly playing Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. Where do I sign, Mr. Baragotti? <laughs> Tell me. Isn't he really doing that, though? I I, th- yes. Mike yeah. Tyson's talked openly about how he and Jamie Foxx are really good friends. That Jamie Foxx wouldn't even have to study Mike Tyson. That's how good Jamie Foxx is at doing Mike Tyson. Dang. That gets me excited. Gets your heart. Gets me excited because Jamie Foxx is always going to be in, in what I would consider good movies. And you put him in Project Power. Still haven't seen it. It's on Netflix. Yep. Showed I, up in my spotlight. The trailer looked okay. How about Bright? Will Smith. Come, dude, we could stay on this topic all day because these are all huge movie stars that I don't give a fuck. Do you have somewhere to be? Out. Yeah, dude, like we, this is the top five and it sells movies on Netflix I don't give a fuck about. That's going to be a good top five. Yeah. Let's, let's put that a pin yeah, in that sure, one. Like, yeah, we'll, let's get back to The Walking Dead because we have somehow gotten all the way over here. If you want to watch, okay, segue it back in. If you want to catch up on The Walking Dead, there's a thing called Netflix. Check it out. Every single season. Yeah, and it's something you should find on Netflix. And that's what Netflix TV is show. for. Yes. They promote it. Mm-hmm. It's part of their best series. Watch it. Catch up because Beyond the Walking Dead comes out when? I'm going to assume it's Sunday. I don't actually know the date. That's very unprofessional. It's computer. Ah, look at that. It's almost like I forgot that it was here. Yeah, computer. Um, we should probably just know it. It's the, that shows how much we're looking forward to it. It's that literally I saw this morning that it's coming out this week. And I was like, oh, we should talk so about we gotta that. We got to talk about this. Uh, well, so Beyond the Walking Dead, wasn't that the talk show that they were doing after? No, that's Talking, talking Dead. October 11th. That's episode two. Blaze of Glory. Episode one, October 4th. Right October below. 4th. Boom. Brave. Got it. Right here. Brave. The Why would you brave. categorize it that way? So that is Sunday, dude. I was right. Okay. It makes sense. I like, mean, that's their day. Right? They, they've always done Sunday. Uh, yeah. I would like, I don't know if I'd recommend, we'll get back to you because I'll, I'll at least, I'll commit to this for our fans. I will commit to this. I will watch Beyond the Walking Dead. I will let you know if it holds up to the standard that, okay, I'll let you know if it's Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead. One's good, for the most part. Has some bad. The other's just mostly bad, in my opinion. So, Lenny, we've talked about having a rating system on this show. Yeah. And we have struggled to kind of find our our, our little niche, the one that we want to we wanna land niche. on. Niche? Niche. No, I got a niche. Plays with squirrels. Oh, okay, there we go. Thank yeah. you. I was like, fuck, what is that? I, I got you, baby. Yeah. Um, so let, let's start off with you take the, the leap of faith. You start off watching Beyond... Beyond the Walking Dead. Beyond, beyond the Walking Dead. Beyond, beyond, beyond the Walking Dead. And you taste it or you waste it for us? We'll get back to if I... I You don't want to taste it or waste it, dude? Somebody out in the fan, out in the crowd, like, let us know. Uh, We're open to suggestions. Obviously, we're not doing really well with it, but I'm going to throw that out there. And if it lands, great. If you catch it, fantastic. The question will be, does it pass the taste test? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, does it pass the taste test? Uh, I will be the first to let you know. Uh, the pictures look very Walking Dead-esque from what I'm seeing up here. There's definitely so zombies. I'm safe to say it's going to be kind of similar. I'll let you know, though, guys. Uh, watch the actual Walking Dead, though. All you people who gave up on it okay. at some point, like, I, I ask this of you. Suck it up. I thought you were going to tell him to suck it. <laughs> I was yeah, like, I wow, man. Uh, <laughs> for aggressive. those at home, I have one point to make to you. Suck it. Uh, suck it up and just go ahead. Try to get back to start where, where you left off. Go. Let me know 
where you left off and I will let you know if it's worth watching. Because if you're at season five, I might be like, uh, it's going to be a little tough. If you're at the Negan part and you just have to make it through one season of like, hey, can Roughness. we fucking get somewhere okay. um, to get to the Whisperer stuff? I think it's worth it. And I think it paid off for me because it's just that like, it. I don't want to spoil anything because it's so great to me. Dude. You don't know it's coming. You know what? You've committed to, to walk in the plank for us. Dude, we're all commitment, guys. I'm going to commit Damn, dude. to getting through the rest of The Walking Dead so that I can join you on that plank. You want to go on beyond... a, a journey to dead and beyond. Oh my God, I tried. Wow, man. I tried. I need you to come a, a little bit better than that. My bad. When you're... When you're I, I'm really glad I caught I burnt, myself. I burnt myself out on the Sandra Bullock thing. Yeah, you're you're doing well, but yeah. that one might have been what they call a reach, mm. and that's sometimes what Netflix does with so, their movies. And so we sorry. don't we don't want to reach. So sorry, but that that's a we've gotten some great takes on The Walking Dead. You've definitely convinced me that it may just be worth that go pushing through the Negan episodes and the Negan season. Um, you're telling me there's a chance. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take that chance. Take the leap, dude. I'm gonna take the leap of faith. Yep. And I'm hoping that you'll be there to catch me. I if we were gonna do that game, I'd have a strong thought about not. And it's nothing to do with you can't trust me. It's just that like you have, it'd be really funny, dude. You have continuously knocked me out of the trust tree. You did it in our top five with D'Angelo. Well, that's bullshit, dude. I regarding the Dick Tracy movie. We're not gonna get into it. Yeah, dude. All right. Fucking trunk. 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 Sorry. All right. Well, we've got trunk you to said- rents. Trunk. See, yeah. now it's just happening to me. Yeah. Okay, dude. We got. I, it's an episode, dude. We. It's a weekly episode. We have to have our moment. You said. Trunk. You said Dick Tracy. I said Trunk Tracy. Trunk Tracy. Is that the sequel? Might be one of those that we have to catch up on. Mm-hmm. All right, Lenny. We've had a good time here so far. This is where we ended. We, we've gotten into some serious shit, and now we know that this is coming to an end. Yep. Because we're talking about trunks again. Yeah, dude, we've run out of stuff. But before we let these guys go, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Mash that subscribe button. It's over here, over there, over there. We might just put it on Lenny's face. It's going to get interesting. And uh, as the kids would say, and as my man D'Angelo would say, hit us in the chat, y'all. Hit us in the chat. Thanks for checking us out this week, guys. We'll see you later. Later.